A new lease on animatronic life, roads covered with Mormon cricket goo, and hey, what's this thing crashing this wedding? Hey, I'm Greg Ott, and we've got all these weird and interesting news stories coming your way right now on your daily news refresh. Before we turn on the amp, give us a like and a hot subscribe to tell the algorithm you want more stuff like this in your feed each and every day. Thanks. So let's kick things off with a little bit of entertainment. When it comes to keeping the crew, they're much as make the you're enjoying the musical stylings of Mr. Munch, Jasper T. Jowles, Pasquale P. Pie Plate, Helen Henney, and Charles Entertainment Cheese himself. The members of the world-famous Munch's Make Believe Band. And whether you're a child letting loose in a place where a kid can be a kid, or an adult still desperately clinging to those glory days of beating Bozo's Bucket Game, these animatronic bands at Chuck E. Cheese locations across the country have served as an entertainment staple for decades. That's from Together We've Got It, a track off of 2020's Songs in the Key of E album. But that concept of togetherness is sadly a bit on the optimistic side here, as the super group of fuzzy rock stars seems to perpetually be on the verge of breaking up. No, Chuck isn't pulling a Morrissey here and trying to call things splits over royalty shares. It's the corporate overlords at Big Cheese trying to toggle the mute switch on these robositions for good. You see, in May, headlines like these bid farewell to Charles Cheese's band. Thanks to plans to phase out the animatronic acts at all but two CEC locations. The company's CEO told the New York Times that kids are consuming entertainment differently today than they were 10, 20 years ago. Hence the need to transition from raggedy bird and chef robots pretending to play music to modern fun, like giant screens, trampolines, and a dance floor. Now, threats like these have come up before. NPR reported back in 2017 that the company behind a large rat puppet with a New York accent was breaking up the Pizza Time players, which this Chuck E. Cheese's wiki fan page describes as, well, pretty much the same group as the Make Believe Band. But as news of Munch's Make Believe Band's impending dissolution spread, a swift backlash from fans appears to have emerged. The types who must already feel burned by that whole, did you sell us a pizza made up of slices from different pizzas? Of course we didn't, controversy from a few years back. And corporate cheese's metaphorical governor just granted a bit of a reprieve to the band of Make Believe, walking back plans to unplug the electric chair on the group at all but two of the restaurant's 400 plus locations. Instead, the music and the band will live on at five locations. Munch's Make Believe Band will continue to play their hits at Chuck E. Cheese locations in Pineville, North Carolina, Hicksville, New York, Springfield, Illinois, and Los Angeles, while Chuck himself will branch out in his own Peter Gabriel style and perform solo sets at a retro store in Nanuet, New York. Okay, sure, it's only five locations, but that's still more than two, where you and yours can continue to enjoy watching these things rock out live, or at least a robotic approximation of live, with renditions of studio tracks that will surely destroy my Apple Music For You suggestions. But in case you still think animatronics are a bit out of touch, and children don't want to hear decades-old creatures singing kids' songs, you might not want to download William Shatner's new album. So Mormon Cricket Sludge has been contributing to car crashes in Nevada. I'll say that again. Mormon Cricket Sludge has been contributing to car crashes in Nevada. This here is the humble Mormon Cricket in question, named not for its devotion to the revelations of Joseph Smith, but because experts say these creatures plagued Mormon settler crops around Salt Lake in the 1800s. So the crickets might not be Mormons, but they're also not crickets. They chirp like crickets, but they're actually shield-backed katydids. And out in Eureka County, Nevada, they're doing, well, this. Yeah, those are Sheriff's Department photos of interstate car wrecks and even a jackknifed semi-truck, which authorities say were brought on due to rain and Mormon cricket sludge. Mormon cricket sludge, of course, not being your favorite punk band, but a lovely sauce created, as noted by the Nevada Department of Transportation, where crickets have been run over by cars. Lovely. US 50 is covered in these crickets, and we weren't sure what they were. The roads are brown. I don't think I have any left on the truck but the front of our trailer is covered in these brown crickets. That's a traveler who was driving around Eureka County on Tuesday. And yeah, this photo posted by the state's Department of Transportation shows a massive infestation of Mormon crickets in the middle of the road. In a news release put out by NDOT on Tuesday, they note that Mormon crickets are a common occurrence throughout Nevada and Western states. And the state's agriculture department is working to treat more than 200,000 acres of land for heavy insect concentrations. Now, as this massive influx of bugs, the very confusing name continues, the transportation department is actually using snow plows to help remove the crickets. And they're also putting up electronic highway signs like these ones from last year, noting 
Caution, slick road. Without going into detail that that slickness has been brought on by hordes of crickets being mashed by heavy vehicles going at a high rate of speed. Though it's not like that sign should be doing anything to try to make you laugh. As we told you about earlier this year on your news refresh, please subscribe. New guidance from the Federal Highway Administration wants to rein in the use of humorous messages on electronic highway road signs. Though I suppose in this case, there's actually nothing funny about dead cricket goo ahead. That's just reality. And finally, we take you to a wedding. As this lovely couple prepares to tie the knot in England, the best man here makes it seem like he lost the rings. I know he has them because I saw them earlier. <laughs> oh my god. He runs off and moments later, he returns with the ring bearer in tow. A penguin donning its natural formal wear. The thing makes a grand entrance and waddles down the aisle with the rings wrapped around its body with a ribbon, trailed by a bucket of fish. Not so surprising given wedding food usually isn't that great. In the presence of your witnesses, family, friends and animals gathered here today. <laughs> now that penguin wasn't a beloved family member or something, but it is the bride's favorite animal, and it came from a rental company that lends out penguins for around 2,500 bucks for two hours. In case you were starting to feel good about your salary. You may kiss the bride. The penguin stuck around the wedding for a while, getting a chance to just kind of stand there, and even take photos for guests with another penguin, who must have been the plus one. And hey, you know what? More love may have been in the air. One of the penguins did Pack one of the guests. Want more penguin content? We know you do. So check out this video of ours from December about micro sleeping penguins who live in Antarctica and sleep in four second increments thousands of times a day. Good night.